I'm now going to demonstrate administering a intramuscular injection using uh, medication withdrawn from an ampule. I have my uh, drug B and I also have my 3cc syringe. Because it's an ampule I'll need a filter needle, which is a large needle with a little filter at the end to filter out any glass that maybe uh, falls into the uh, liquid. I also have a, another needle that I'm going to apply afterwards to inject into the patient. Um, I have my medication sheet, I got my clean gloves, and I've got my alcohol swab. So I first look at my order. I'm going to do uh, my first check, five rights in my first check. And I have drug B. The order is for 1.6 milligrams IM. And available, I have an ampule that has 2 milligrams of drug B in it uh, with the, for each milliliter. So each milliliter has 2 milligrams and I need 1.6 milligrams. So I do my calculation and I come up with a dose of 0 0.8 milliliters to be administered to the patient. Um, now because that's a smaller amount, I'm going to inject that into the deltoid muscle. And therefore that's why I'm using a little smaller gauge and length of the uh, needle. It's a 25 gauge, 1 inch needle. So initially I want to put on my filter needle. I'm going to open my syringe place on this my filter needle. And then I'm going to open my ampule. Now ampule has a uh, top and bottom piece to it and it's, it's uh, narrower between the two and that's where you're going to break it. Um, sometimes it has a, this one has a little blue circle around the area. Um, in order to prevent injury to my hand, you can take a uh, two by two, or you can take four by four. Sometimes I take the alcohol swab and use that to place over the top of the ampule when I break it. You can also have gloves on, that's helpful. When you break the ampule, you're going to basically just snap it. You're going to snap it this way, or you can snap it this way. I prefer to snap it away from me. Um, so you hold it straight and then you just give it a quick snap. And then that would go into sharps. Now I want to uh, withdraw the fluid with my filter needle. So I'm going to put the needle into the ampule. And it's a, if you look at that filter needle, if you can see from there, but it's a pretty good size needle. And I'm going to withdraw the fluid up. Now initially you're going to have air because the needle's empty. So I'm going to pull past what I need. I'm going to pull up most of the fluid in there because I can just get rid of what I don't use because I'm going to get rid of it anyway. So I pulled up almost to the whole two milliliters. Now I'm going to recap it with one hand. And I'm going to remove that needle. And now I'm going to replace it with the needle that I'm going to be using. Remove the cap. Now I want to get to the dose that I, that I uh, need to administer to the patient. Now there's a little bit of air in the bottom of that um, syringe right near the plunger and that happens often if you just kind of either flick your finger, I don't do it that way because it hurts my finger, you can also hit your hand and the, and the air will pop to the top. So first, I, while I've got this facing up, I want to get all the air out. So I just have fluid. Now I have like two and a half milliliters and I only need 0.8 milliliters. So I'm going to take this emesis basin and inject the uh, fluid out of the syringe until I have 0.8 milliliters. Okay, now I have 0.8 milliliters. Done my second check with the MAR, the five right second check. I'm going to recap this. With one hand, and then I'm going to label the bottom of this with a pre-made label that I've done. It says drug B on it. Um, two other variations that I want to show you with an IM injection. One is an airlock, and the other is a Z-track. Now, the airlock, the purpose of the airlock and the Z-track are the same. They're to prevent you from getting. Um, any of the medication into your subcutaneous tissue and damaging it. 
So the first one I want to show you is the airlock. Now we've got point, we've got our medication to where we want it, and I'm just going to add a little bit of air to the uh, syringe. So I'm going to pull down like two tenths, just a little bit of air. You can see the air on the top. So when I turn the syringe upside down, that air is at the top. So when I inject the fluid, the fluid's going to be followed with air. So no, no uh, medication is going to be left in the subcutaneous tissue. It will all be down into the muscle. Um, often you'll see those used on Lovenox or heparin anticoagulants that damage, that can damage the, the uh, tissue. So I've got my airlock in there. Now, uh, at this point I'm going to go to the patient's bedside. I go into the room, wash my hands, and I pull the curtain around, provide for privacy. And I have my MAR with me, the medication, an alcohol swab, and I go over to the patient, explain to the patient what I'm going to be doing, and use the two identifiers to uh, make sure I have the correct patient and do my last five rights. Um, so I'm going to also demonstrate z track when I administer it IM. And this could be given, well, like I said, in the deltoid, but usually if you're giving z track you are using the, um, a larger muscle. But um, you said because it was a smaller amount we were using the deltoid. The, the way that you do, I take my alcohol swab, the way that you do the z track is that you pull the tissue, the subcutaneous tissue, out of the way. So I've pulled it towards me, I've picked my site, cleaned it, starting from the center, going around, hold on to that, and then I drop my top, administer it at a 90 degree angle, aspirate, and inject. And you can hear that little bit of air going in at the end. And that's administering an IM injection using an airlock and Z-Track.